Hey, what's up guys? Matt with the Movement System. Today we're going to talk about the difference between aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis. So to lay the groundwork here, glycolysis is the process of breaking down glucose or blood sugar. So if we eat a carbohydrate and we would increase our blood sugar, and this is the process of actually turning that blood glucose, which is floating around in your bloodstream, into energy. Now, when we're thinking about this at the cellular level, all the process of glycolysis, whether it be aerobic or anaerobic, is actually going on in the cytoplasm, or in the case of a muscle cell, the sarcoplasm. That is the fluid in the cell that is not the mitochondria. And when we think about the oxidative processes, like the Krebs cycle and oxidative phosphorylation, those are actually occurring in the mitochondria. We're going to talk about the difference here in a second. Okay. So let's talk about aerobic glycolysis first. And some people will call this slow glycolysis. Now we can see here a glucose molecule. It's a six carbon molecule, carbon, 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 carbon here. The basic process of glycolysis, glycolysis, it tells you what it is. It's glycolysis splitting a glucose molecule in this case. So that six carbon is being split in half into two three carbon pyruvate molecules. In the case of aerobic glycolysis, there's oxygen present in the cell there's adequate you know, blood oxygenation, that oxygen is being carried into the cell, into the mitochondria, the mitochondria has room. So what's going to happen is that pyruvate now is actually going to be broken down to acetyl-CoA and enter the Krebs cycle. So that is what happens after the aerobic glycolysis. But in the case of anaerobic glycolysis, this is the case where there's not adequate muscle oxygen to fully oxidize all of the glucose molecules to get our energy. So in this case of anaerobic glycolysis, what's happening is that glucose molecule is gonna do the same process of splitting in half. Also done in the cytoplasm slash sarcoplasm. But in this case, that pyruvate molecule now is going to be further broken down into lactate. And let's talk about the difference between lactate and lactic acid and the benefit of this process. Because lactate actually gets a bad rap sometimes. We think lactate makes you sore, it doesn't. Um, in the case of glycolysis, what we're doing is we're actually taking an NAD plus and we're turning it into an NADH and a hydrogen ion. And we know that hydrogen ions, when we build up, actually causes acidosis, metabolic acidosis. Uh, and in the case of normal aerobic conditions, when we're just walking, jogging, that hydrogen ion and this NADH here, these will both be oxidized, meaning they can, the NADH would actually move all the way to the electron transport chain, and that would be oxidized, and the hydrogen ion would also be cleared. But in the case of anaerobic, meaning we're doing heavy work, you know, above our lactate threshold, right? So maybe 180, 190 beats per minute, something really hard. That anaerobic environment, we're gonna be building up pyruvate faster than we can move it through the Krebs cycle. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna reverse this process, so this was reduction, we're actually going to do oxidation of it here and go from NADH and H plus back to NAD plus. So what the purpose of this is that that lactate is actually going to be taking a hydrogen ion. Now, if the pH drops way low to like below four, for example, we could have the case where this would actually be expressed as lactate's conjugate base, which would be lactic acid, but we know that muscle pH doesn't change that dramatically. So we actually, in the case of pH dropping to say 6.5, 6.4, we're still going to be in the form of actual lactate here, where lactate's accepting a hydrogen ion, it's actually buffering, it's taking hydrogen ions out of the bloodstream, and then that lactate molecule can go to the liver, for example, for the quarry cycle, or to type 1 muscle fibers for oxidation, or to cardiac muscle, which can then oxidize it within the blood flow to the heart. So, Overall, what we want to take away from this is that lactate is actually buffering hydrogen ions out. It's actually producing this uh, high energy intermediate here. And again, that's a benefit. That's a good thing for the muscle. Okay, so you might be wondering when would you use aerobic versus anaerobic glycolysis? And typically, in an aerobic environment, we're working for more than three minutes in a lower heart rate zone. Uh, and that could be done up to marathons and more distances. But anaerobic is typically whenever we're working for 30 to 90 second type work bouts. This could be sprinting, rowing, swimming, any uh, weightlifting, high intensity activity uh, that's gonna be so taxing on the body that we're gonna actually have to rely on anaerobic energy production rather than just the aerobic systems. 
Alright guys, I hope that was helpful for you in understanding the difference between aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis. If it was, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to learn more, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.